So Sierra, how is bluegrass music performed? A band is necessary to play bluegrass music because of the need for lead and rhythm instruments. Bluegrass bands are usually made up of four, five, or six members. It is played on acoustic stringed instruments. The basic instruments are the banjo, mandolin, guitar, fiddle, and bass fiddle. Sometimes you hear a resophonic guitar, which is also called a dobro. Lead bluegrass instruments tend to anticipate or surge ahead of the beat to give the music extra energy and drive, particularly in a live setting. Let's find out more from Greg Cahill and his band. Hi, I'm Greg Cahill, and my friends and I have a bluegrass band called The Special Consensus. We're going to spend a few moments with you here today to tell you all about the instruments used in a bluegrass band. I get to tell you about my favorite instrument in a bluegrass band, the five-string banjo. Most people believe that the banjo came from Africa in the 17 and 1800s as a three-stringed instrument called a banjar. One of the strings was shorter than the other two. And in the 1800s, we added the fourth string and then the fifth string. But we did keep one of the strings shorter. That's the design of the five-string banjo, which is made mostly out of wood. Metal parts hold together this plastic part called the head of the banjo. Now you can play the banjo with your bare fingers. There are many different playing styles, but in a bluegrass band, I use two metal finger picks and a metal or a plastic thumb pick to roll across the strings like this. It's tuned to an open G chord. D, B, G, a lower D, and a higher G. A gentleman named Earl Scruggs played with Bill Monroe in the 1940s and many credit him with really helping Bill define the bluegrass sound. He played in this three finger style they call it and he was the first banjo player to play that style with Bill Monroe. Here's a tune that, that Earl played quite often. That's called Cripple Creek. Well now my friend Josh is going to tell you all about the mandolin. Well, hello, my name is Josh Williams, and I'm going to tell you about this instrument called the mandolin. This instrument is considered to be an Italian instrument made almost entirely out of wood. There's eight strings on the mandolin, and they're tuned in fifths, starting with a G, then a D, an A, and finally an E note. The thing that's a little bit different about the mandolin is the fact that it has eight strings, therefore there's actually two strings for each note. The strings are in pairs. And I play the mandolin with a pick, the same way people play guitar with this plastic pick. And I use that pick to pluck the strings in order to get my sound. And Bill Monroe was the first person to turn the mandolin into a lead instrument. Before he came along, it was only used for rhythm most of the time. He started taking things that he learned from Uncle Penn, who was a fiddle player, and started playing them on the mandolin and playing melodies out and getting this sound. And instead of strumming similar to the way the guitar was played at the time, he decided to do what's called a chop. Now we don't have any drums in this kind of music, so we have to substitute our instruments to get those certain sounds. Now I'm substituting the mandolin for that snare drum sound. When you have a measure of four beats, beats one and three are known as your on beat, and beats two and four are known as the off beat. And that's what I play the mandolin chop on, is that off beat, so it sounds like this. And that's pretty much the mandolin for you, but I'm pulling double duty today, so I have one other instrument to show you. And now this instrument actually has two names. You can call it the fiddle and the violin and be correct. The only difference between the two is the style of music that's being played on it. The violin is usually considered to be classical music, and the fiddle is usually considered to be bluegrass, country music, and western swing, and that's what I play as a fiddle. Now a couple of things that are a little bit different about the fiddle or the violin is the fact that there's no frets on the fingerboard. So we have to learn our positions by a whole lot of practicing. And another thing that's a little bit different about the fiddle or the violin is this, and this is called the bow. Now the bow is a stick of wood with horse hair in it, and there's a white powder called rosin on that hair in order to make the, the hair stick to the strings. And there's four strings on the fiddle or the violin, and they're tuned exactly the way the mandolin strings are tuned. They're in fifths, but they're single strings. And uh, when you drag your bow across the strings, you get this sound. Now that's the fiddle or the violin for you, and you've probably had enough of me by now. So I'm going to pass it over to Jamie. 
Hello, my name is Jamie Clifton and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the instrument I'm holding here. It's a, a six string acoustic guitar. The history of it, it was brought over from Europe in the late 17th century. And actually the first guitar was brought over from Spain with gut strings on it. But in bluegrass we have steel strings on our guitars. Uh, guitar is basically made mostly of wood. It's got a couple of metal, metal things here and there. So if you guys will look real close on the tuners, you'll see that every string is hooked to a tuner. So if you ever want to find out how many strings is on any instrument, you just count the tuners. And the open tuning of the guitar is uh, first string starts at an E, an A, a D, a G, a B, and another E. The guitar was basically used as a rhythm instrument, and uh, I'd like to play a little rhythm for you. And uh, two guys came along in the 50s, Clarence White and Doc Watson, and they totally changed the way the guitar was, was used. The job of the guitar was not a rhythm instrument anymore, it was a lead instrument. And I'll play a little lead for you. Well that's a guitar for you and we'll let Tim tell you about the bass. Hi. My name is Tim Dishman. I want to talk to you about this instrument called the bass. The bass comes from Germany. It's tuned exactly like the fiddle or the violin, only it's backwards. So my low notes are the fiddle's high notes, and the fiddle's low notes are my high notes. To tune the E, A, D, G, it sounds like this. And the sound comes out these holes right here, they're called F holes. So when you pull on the string, the sound bounces around and it comes out these holes. And my job, in the bluegrass band as I play on the on beat. I play on beats one and beats three. It sounds like this. Another style of, of playing bass in bluegrass is also called walking bass. That sounds like this. Okay, that's the bass for you. And now that you've heard most of the bluegrass instruments, we're going to bring the guys back and demonstrate how we put this all together. Now we're going to play together on a tune that Bill Monroe himself made up. It's called the Shenandoah Valley Breakdown. just yet, there's still one more instrument we want you to learn about, and Jerry Douglas is with us to show you the Dobro guitar. Hi, this is Jerry Douglas, and I'm here to tell you about the Resiphonic guitar, or uh, better known as the Dobro guitar. It was created by some uh, immigrants from uh, Czechoslovakia, these five brothers whose last name was Dopera. So shortened to Dopera Brothers was uh, Dobro. So they liked Hawaiian music, came over in the 20s when there was a big Hawaiian craze and created this guitar, this uh, Art Deco looking guitar, and uh, made a louder Hawaiian guitar. 
What makes this guitar unique is this construction of a, a metal cover plate with a, a spun aluminum cone underneath it, underneath this, this uh, cover plate, and with a spider that uh, what we call a spider, which has eight legs that sets on the cone, and uh, all the sound goes right into the guitar and is projected right out, and which makes the guitar faster and louder. Another thing that makes this guitar unique is you play it with a metal bar. And the, the strings are higher off the neck so you can actually use the bar to slide instead of using your fingers to fret the fingerboard of this guitar. It's played with uh, two metal finger picks and a thumb pick to get different rolls and more, more strings, different combinations of uh, picking techniques. A difference in this guitar and a usual guitar is this one is played horizontally on your lap or standing up. So I'll demonstrate that for you. And uh, since the strings are raised, got the bar, we're all set to play. I'll, I'll play a little something for you that will give you an idea of uh, what these things sound like and what can be done with them. That was Jerry Douglas showing us the Dobro guitar. Thanks, Jerry, and thanks to Josh, Greg, Tim, and Jamie of Special Consensus for those amazing instrument demonstrations. 